Hello everyone, this is Michael from Blue Road Home Studio. I hope you're all doing very well. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. In this video, we are gonna bounce a software instrument to a mono track using bounce in place or control B in Logic. It doesn't matter if that software instrument is a stereo instance or a mono instance. We are gonna bounce that to a mono track. There's a little bit of a trick to it. So without further ado, let's get in the land of zeros and ones. So to show you how to do this, I just loaded a software instrument here and it's the Arteria Prophet V3 and I just loaded it with a classic bass patch. One thing to note is that this particular instrument is a stereo instance. There is actually no option to open a mono instance of the Prophet V3 and most of the presets are in stereo. However, I am using this bass preset and it is actually in mono it's a mono signal now you'll know that this signal is actually mono because you can watch the meters down here when i play it see how the left and the right are are staying equal with each other obviously that means it's a mono signal so we want to bounce this so it's a mono track now if i just go bounce in place or hit control b well that's fine and what it does is it it actually creates an interleaved file. Uh, it, it's, it's a stereo file, but it is mono. It's what we call dual mono. So the same information on the left is on the right. So this is a dual mono track. Now, you could use this fine, and then you could just collapse this track to mono, and that's fine. But really, we want it to just be a mono track, okay? And there's actually a way to do this. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna delete this permanently. So I'm gonna go up to audio file here and delete files. We're gonna do this again. I'm gonna unmute this, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here and we're gonna get a gain plugin. So if I go to utility gain, you can see I only have stereo and dual mono, right? But if you hit option and then click audio effects, and I go down to utility, I'm holding the uh, option key, you'll see gain, I now have a mono option. So I'm just gonna hit that. Now, you might think that I can go ahead and just bounce in place, and this mono utility will make the track mono, but it doesn't. You have to go one extra step, and that is you have to uncheck include volume pan automation not a big deal because we don't have volume or pan automation on this and this is not a big deal because when you are bouncing a midi file to audio you're going to do most of your your panning and your volume information most likely in the audio version so deselect that now hit ok and if you double click on this you will see that this is indeed a mono track you can even see it by the icon up here. It is a mono track. And you can see that this track is actually a mono track now. All right, it's automatically mono. So there you go. We have mono. Now, don't go away because I want to show you something else. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this and delete this. By the way, if you go up to edit and delete, it's just going to delete it from your session, but it's not going to delete the actual file off your hard drive. So if you again, if you want to delete it permanently, you go under audio file. All right, just a little. Some people get that confused. Okay, now I'm going to create a new software instrument. I am going to select Native Instruments, Contact, and I am going to open a mono instance. So I just opened a mono instance of Contact. Now I'm going to, I'm going to go down here to Super Audio Cart. We're just going to use that sound, okay? And let me turn it down here. I'm going to unmute this. I'm just going to record in a little something simple here. And I'll go ahead and I'll smart quantize it actually. Smart quantizing means that uh, it, it has kind of a human feel. That's uh, another tutorial for a different time. So now we have this track. Theoretically, since this is a mono track, I should be able to just bounce it in place. Okay. If I, if I have this check, the include volume pan automation, watch what happens. No, it. <laughs> it actually comes out as dual mono again, which we don't want, right? So I'm gonna hit F, go into my audio preferences and delete this file because we don't want it. Delete, delete. Now, this time, 
because this is already mono, we do not have to do anything uh, along the lines of the gain utility. We can just bounce in place, but remember, again, just uncheck this include volume pan automation. Just uncheck it, okay? This is all we have to do this time because this is a mono instance of contact or a mono instance of whatever you're using. So I'm just gonna hit okay, and then boom, we have a pure mono track, thank goodness. And you can see it's a mono track up here, and again, down here on the actual channel, the bounce track, it is mono. I really wish that Logic uh, would make this a little simpler. Like when you go bounce in place, I really just wish there was an option to tick along here, just say, hey, bounce this in mono, where you could include your volume and pan animation. It has been this way as long as I can remember. Earlier versions, whatever. I don't know why they don't ever change that or update it. Maybe not enough people care about it, but if you're watching this video, you care about it. But now at least you know how to get around it. And this way, it's just a lot neater. You don't have to go and further convert a dual mono track to a mono track. So this is real nice. I hope you found this tip helpful. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I will get back to them as soon as I can. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Please give it a like. You can ring that bell for future notifications whenever I release a video. And as always, keep being creative and keep producing music.